All right, so here's the situation. For those who haven't seen the first half of this uh, two or three or several part video series, um, I have a uh, prototype, I guess, pre-release engineering sample, whatever the hell you want to call it, uh, SP shell from Funny Playing uh, that has been modified over typical SP shells in that the screw spacing is a little bit different on the top half of the shell to accommodate for larger um, LCD kits. Additionally, uh, there is a somewhat more advanced mod for this shell that involves installing a USB-C charge port. So we're going to go ahead and cover those in this video. I wanted to separate this out from the um, first half of this video because both of these mods are going to be a little bit more advanced. Um, as opposed to reshelling the console, which I consider it, it's a pretty beginner level mod. But uh, if you want to do the USB-C mod, that's not for beginners. Um, so I, I figure separating this out a little will, will help distinguish that. Um, but also I, I spent 50 minutes reshelling a console and that was already kind of long so let's 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 get going all right so i have shown similar mods before um you we're gonna start with usb-c and then we're gonna install a, a backlight kit in this thing it's is gonna be pretty sweet, just you white. Just you white. All right. Uh, but we're gonna start with USB-C. I think that'll be a little bit more topical than uh, the backlight mod because likely by the time these shells come out uh, for general purchase, uh, so too will the backlight kit that is actually designed for this thing. Uh, so I don't think that'll be as relevant, but we'll do it anyway because why not? Anyway, I am going to go ahead and pull this thing out because soldering while this thing is in the shell is going to be just a general bad idea, but also I have to get to this side to remove this charge port. Now this is an advanced level mod. If you are new to soldering, you are going to have an extremely bad time with this. Um, the charge port especially is very not forgiving because pulling this off there are these six surface mount pads on the back here, and they are extremely delicate. So you're going to watch me do this, and hopefully I'm going to not mess it up. Uh, but in the event that I don't mess it up and I make it look easy, please keep in mind that I have over a decade of soldering experience. It's, it's that experience that I have that makes it look easy. Uh, so I am going to start by using my solder sucker here and I am going to clear the solder from the anchors there almost like that now I'm gonna come in here with the wick and get the rest of it There we go. It's not quite all there yet. All right. Good enough to continue though. So now I am going to double check this by just gently tapping on these legs. That one moves so it's nice and free and that one moves so it's nice and free so we should be good to continue now i've seen people use hot air for this i don't like hot air uh, because there's lots of plastics in the direct vicinity uh, like the battery connector the l button and the link port that we do not want to melt now you can insulate those and it'll probably be fine uh, but then you also risk melting the charge port and I would like to save this if I can. 
So my preferred method is to come in here with a giant solder ball on all of these pins. I'm gonna make sure I wet all of the pins and then I'm just gonna kinda of work my iron back and forth and lift the port off just like that. Now again, I would like to reiterate that I have over a decade of soldering experience that lets me do this cleanly. I didn't lift any pads off, but if I had a nickel for every time I've seen someone say, hey, I tried a USB-C mod on my SP and I lifted the pads. I mean, I wouldn't be rich, but you know, I, I don't know, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> anyway, now that we've got that off, I am going to go ahead and pull one of these off the sprue here. And one of the particularly interesting things about this is this is an absurdly thick PCB and the port itself is raised up. It's not flush with the board. I'm actually kind of, kind of annoyed with Funny Playing through no fault of their own. Uh, only because I had this exact idea and I was so excited to, to do it. I'm like, oh man, this is going to work perfectly. And then they sent me this like a week later and I'm like, oh, son of a gun, now I can't do it. <laughs> so, not their fault. Uh, I have no idea where my calibers are though. Oh, yeah, I do. I moved them. Sorry. I am in the middle of rearranging my entire workspace because... A, it is a total pigsty, uh, but B, things aren't where I want them to be. But you can see these PCBs are 2.2 millimeters thick, which is, uh, if you're not familiar, absurdly thick. Um, normally PCBs are 1.6 millimeters, that is the standard thickness. Um, the other standard thickness, I guess, is 0.8 millimeters, which is what the SP is, though normally Game Boy consoles are 1 millimeter thick. I have no idea where to get 2.2 millimeter thick PCBs, but I can't imagine. It's very cheap. Last time I tried pricing out PCBs that were 2 millimeters or thicker, it was uh, not a good time. Uh, but anyway, there's the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 pads on here. One of them is joined with a ground. The other is separate from the ground. We want to make sure not to short that out. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a problem if we've got it lined up. And then we have the two anchors for the sides there. I have no idea what the best way to get this thing lined up is. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get one of the anchors lined up by just like filling it up with solder and then go from there you know once once I've got the one corner tacked down it should be pretty straightforward to get the rest of it done uh, my one concern is I'm fairly certain funny playing used lead free solder and I've got leaded here and lead free and leaded don't always mix I think we'll be fine. Okay. I'm going to try and get that lined up. And it is definitely crooked, but you can see what I'm going for. Since I've got the one side down, I can kind of shift it around and move it until I'm, I'm pleased with the placement. And I think I'm just going to leave that for the time being and see how this is supposed to fit. So we put that on there. I believe this is going to... Yeah. This only goes in the shell the one way. It's nice and secure in there. Oop. Just set that aside. So we'll want to put that on there. And then I am gonna 
I guess just guess and check the alignment and actually it's already pretty good. It looks like it needs to go back more though. That's fine. That's easy. Take that off. Again, I've still only got the one pad soldered down. Not until I've got the placement. I don't want to have to redo all those solder pads. Oh, and that looks perfect. All right. It even looks straight. Shocking. All right. Yeah, it's actually aligned. I'm surprised. Let's get the other one soldered down. Now that there's a nice big blob on that. Redo this one, make sure it's nice and nice and solid. And then we just gotta solder down on the back here. And this is gonna be difficult. I do not have <laughs> I do not have a good tip on here for this. Right. That up to the light and I can see that my entire board Oh, I should have checked this before trying to solder down because almost none of the vias are lining up with the pads. It's... You can see... I'll use my soldering iron to point here. You can see this white line here. That should be lined up with the edge of this board. So I messed that up. Which... While it sucks for me, it's probably going to be a good experience for you guys because it'll let you see either how to fix it or how not to fix it when, if you do the same thing I just did. <gasps> oh no! I've finally done it. I've worn out the silicone tip in my solder sucker, and I have no idea what I did with the uh, extras. Oh, that's unfortunate. I remember getting it. I'm like, oh yeah, this is important. I'll have to set this aside in a safe place. Maybe I can get away with that. We'll find out. Nope. Oh, I'm going to have a hard time with this. Now I think I need to use the hot air to get this off. One moment, please. Alright, so I have partially insulated some of it. Uh, I think that should be good enough. And I don't know where else to put my little vices. Oh, that'll do. Now, the goal with the aluminum tape is not to protect everything from heat. It's just to give me enough extra insulation, I guess, that I can try and, and uh, 
get this out of here without melting any of these parts. Um, unfortunately, I might melt this port just a little bit, but worst case scenario, I do have another one. Actually, ah, oh, no, the uh, LCD connector is right there, so I can't even approach this from the bottom. That's okay. There we go. That was pretty painless. Let's try this again. Hey, and I didn't melt anything. For how bad I'm doing, I just got insanely lucky. Let's try this again. It is nice and flat. Yeah, let's keep grabbing that while it's nice and hot. I'm sure that's fine. And I did it again. Let's see how many times I can keep doing it. Alright, so I did melt the port a little bit, but I don't think I melted it enough for it to make a difference. Um, first thing I am going to do before attempting to resolder this is find my files, which I have no idea where they are. Bear with me. All right. Forgive me for that. I am in the process of redoing my entire setup, both my desk and just general purpose storage because... I keep losing things and like I, I have things at my desk within reach that I don't ever use so I'm trying to get rid of that stuff but I am using my file here to file down the uh, little mouse bites that had this board connected to the um, I don't want to say sprue because that's not the correct term, but for all intents and purposes, it is a sprue. I think it'll make my life a lot easier when I go to solder this again. Alright. I don't want to file off too much because the things I need to solder to are right there, and I don't want to file them off. Alright, let's try this one more time. This time, I'm going to try and keep everything lined up. Or at the very least, check the alignment before soldering it all down. Oh, I just knocked so many screws off my desk because my insistence of keeping so many screws right there. Alright, it looks relatively lined up. It doesn't look straight though. Let's check the alignment once again. And actually it's straighter than I thought it was. And the alignment is pretty good. I think we're actually good where it is.
And since all of those vias are actually lined up this time, I think I'm just going to leave it. Solder down, redo that one. Oh, that's so much better. Ooh, that's a lot of solder on there. that solder ball over but it's not working. Now oh, there we go. I don't have all of them soldered though. I still got to get that last leg. Now I've got a bridge. There we go. Go launching yet another screw. All right, so that is approximately what it should look like, I believe. We've got all six soldered down. Hey, there's that last screw. And that's hot, but not hot enough to ruin the plastic. We can slide that on, and then we can just. Reassemble it and we should be good to go. I'm not gonna connect that up or anything. I'm just really doing a test fit Same thing I'm missing the power switch, but I'm not too worried. I'm gonna drop that in there just to keep things aligned Drop that in there. Oh Hello, I went to reach down for my charge cable and My cat was there so Plug that in, you can see it charges up just fine. The Game Boy is pulling uh, 250 milliamps at 5 volts, about what we expected. Pull that out. Oh, I have no idea what it's doing because the screen's not connected. Let's switch that off. I am fairly certain this supports audio. We will test that out in a moment. But first, I'm going to test out USB C host support which of course there is none. Uh, so if you wanted to charge with a USB-C cable, a cable that has this connector on both sides, you're not gonna have any luck. Uh, of course that's not supported because why would it be? Thanks funny playing. Uh, but of course this is a um, which I'm gonna call it an engineering sample. I'm fairly confident it should work with one of these headphone dongles. Is that plugged in all the way? It feels like it should go in further. Hang on. Am I tripping? No. Okay. It's just a very shallow port. Sure. Um. I don't have headphones because of course I don't. Let me grab some. Alright, I found these cheapos that came with my Galaxy S9. Turn the volume up and turn this on. And nope. I have no idea what this is, but it's not headphones. At least it's not switching the speaker off. But it could also be that these are... Well, no, that shouldn't matter with this dongle. Never mind. I'll investigate this more later, but I don't know that it works with this. Which is annoying, because it does work with that one. 
but nonetheless, that's how we get that soldered down. It is a engineering sample slash pre-release, oh god. Uh, so it might be intended to work with those headphone dongles and it, mine just happens to not, who knows, but I'll play with that more later. I think I will leave that like that for now. Just to make sure because that feels like it should go deeper. No? It does the same thing there. That's wild. These are very shallow ports. All right. So next up, I think I actually want to pull the SP out of this thing and just slap this on the back here and make sure that, well, I don't even have to do that. I can just plug this in. And I can see that the cable is shy of the connector there, which means that's gonna fit. That'll be fine. I mean, it'll still be tight, but it'll work with a slate. So I'm, I'm pleased with that. Okay. Now let's do the screen kit. So I had this ITA kit set aside. This is just the regular Game Boy Advance kit with one of those 34 to 32 pin Game Boy Advance SP adapter ribbons connected to it. I'm not going to bother pulling this off because this connector is stupid tight and I'm actually genuinely afraid of breaking it. Uh, but we will be hooking up the uh, right, left, and select wires to the SP. Uh, so I need to come back here, pop this out, and then let's get that soldered up. And hopefully it fits in the top half. I have not tested this. I am just assuming it does. Get that solder cleaned up. And let's get some wire. I want two. So like I said, this is a regular Game Boy Advance version, not the SP version. I know Funny Playing intends to make a, a version specific to the SP, which means how I get this connected is going to be different than uh, the SP version, but I'm going to wire this up. Tin. What is that? TP9. And then over here, I've got... Where is... Where are the labels? Ah, there we go. The labels for this section are right down here. Uh, TP8. That is the second from the bottom. And then we want Q12B. So we can use the brightness button, because this is an SP and not a slate. Otherwise, we would be using TP2 or TP3 for select and start, respect, respectively. But since we have the brightness button, we might as well use it. Left, I am going to 
to tie a small knot in the end of the cable. Or I'm going to try at the very least. this is happening. I think I'm trying to tie it too close to the end. another screw and then for the select wire say we do two knots or just a differently spaced knot that's easier so left is closer to the end than select. Help me remember that. Uh, but before we continue, I'm just going to go ahead and rest that in there for now. Because we need to get the actual screen portion installed. Or, hmm. Yeah. We'll start with. I said I'd see how IPS kits fit, so let me grab an IPS kit so we can test the fit on that. Pop that out. Oops, forgot something. Let me grab an IPS kit. All right, I grabbed two. We're not gonna bother fully connecting them up because this thing doesn't actually work. This is just a screen with a ripped off ribbon cable. Uh, this thing I think works, but we're not gonna bother hooking that up either. Uh, I've got a funny playing ribbon and one of these bigger chunky boys. The one chip as it were. I think this is actually a slate kit, but it doesn't make a difference. The hardware is the same, just slightly different firmware. So that would go, maybe, there we go, like that. And there. Seems to fit no problem. And yeah, we'd have to cut this side. It's not clearing that PCB. Uh, I don't know specifically. Yeah, I do know exactly what we'd have to trim. Uh, it's going to have to be like OEM. Uh, you can see it's, it's already partially trimmed. Or maybe you can't see because it's transparent. But there's this wall down here that's already kind of cut, uh, or at least molded short. But there's these support ribs that would have to come off too. I'm not going to trim them 
because this is a clear shell and it's going to be very evident if I do, uh, but at least one of those, probably both, needs to get trimmed. Uh, if we were using the funny playing kit with the wrong screen, mind you, but still the smaller ribbon that would fit in there approximately like that, and it fits perfectly fine. So this should work with any of the 9380 based kits. Uh, I'm going to pull that off. This ribbon does actually work. I don't want to ruin it. Uh, the screen would sit just like that. The ribbon would go right about there-ish. And then that goes on there, no problem. So the funny playing kit, yeah, you can hear it rattling around. Um, I believe you're supposed to use the foam to hold it in place. Otherwise, it sinks in. Uh, unfortunately, they have not modified the shell to hold that in place, I guess, but it's good enough. Uh, otherwise, we want to use this bad boy. That's going to seat in there pretty much like that, but I'm going to have to fold things down. Uh, and I am going to... Ooh, you know what? We could do this without a lens, and it would it would cover the entire playable area, but we're gonna use a lens. I've got, thankfully, a single glass lens in my uh, spare parts bin. Um, trying to think of the best way the order of operations for this because I need to get that soldered up but I of course already soldered it to the bottom half of the SP but I also need to get this installed uh, okay thankfully that is a brand new screen I thought it was used Come on. Uh, Cloud Game Store does make some very nice SP lenses. Uh, unfortunately, I am not. Uh, I'm not known for my foresight, so I didn't think to grab any of them in advance. Uh, but also, in my defense, I wasn't really expecting this shell. So this is kind of a. Um, improvisation anyway. There we go. Set that aside. Ooh, I am glad I checked that because that is a horrifyingly dirty lens. Even though it's literally brand new. I would be kind of pissed if I if I laid that down. There's like, uh, I don't know, stains on the inside? Yeah, that's really disappointing to see. Uh, I have no idea how long I've had this or where I got it, but hopefully the new lenses don't have this problem. Uh, I don't know if Funny Playing intends on selling lenses. I know their kits are going to be pre-laminated, so you don't have to do this sort of nonsense, but because of who I am as a person, I'm... Do I'm DIY. I'm doing it myself anyway. But like I said, Cloud Game Store makes some nice lenses. And had I better foresight, I would have grabbed one for this. 
but I didn't. So I'm working with what I got, and what I got kind of sucks. That is significantly better, though. You gotta clean it ahead of time because you can't clean it once it's assembled. And there's like some specks. I don't know if they're on the inside or the outside. And it's not like I have another one of these things, at least not in glass. Hmm, maybe I should use a plastic one. That'll be a lot easier to take apart. Oh well. We're gonna go hard. So the lens is gonna center this thing within the housing. So we wanna install the lens first. <sighs> Might as well wipe this off. It's not as clean as I thought it was. Good enough, I guess. And then I'm just going to disconnect that. Oh, shoot. I messed that up. Oh, and I can see straight from this side that I did not do a good enough job cleaning that. Uh, so if I hold that up to the screen, maybe you can see the corn. Come on. Focus. Focus. Lock. There we go. You can see towards the edges. That there's It's like clouded or something. I don't know. Let's unlock that. Okay. Try that again. I think some thicker style adhesive would be a lot better in this case too. Getting this off when it's fully stuck down is going to be difficult. I have a trick up my sleeve for that though. No, see, it's still not good enough. Let me pause while I do this so I'm not wasting all this time. All right, I think I've finally got it clean. No, nope, there's still a little bit in that corner. Okay, just a little bit, just a little bit. Oh, shoot, what corner was it? This one. I don't know, it, it's it's almost like gla like streaks from trying to clean it with Windex or something. And I don't know, maybe that's exactly what it is, because these are UV printed. Uh, so they would have had to clean the lens and then apply some sort of adhesion promoter for the UV inks. And then, oh my goodness, let's see how many things I can drop. All right. And I think that should be it. That looks better. Let's stick that down. Hopefully I don't come to regret this, but... There we go. There is our DIY laminated kit. And then... This will get installed like that, and then we'll have to fold that down. I think that should be good enough. I'm going to want to move that touch sensor. 
Give that a little bit of a spin. Drop that there. And so far everything fits, so I'm surprised and pleased. I'm going to go ahead and throw a couple of screws in, even though i got to pull it apart in a minute. I just want this thing to not flop about while... Well, actually, I suppose the screen doesn't have to be in here while I'm doing this, but... I suppose it's good to just double check before I carry on. Alright. Yeah, I'm actually pleased with that. Alright. So what did I say? Select has the knot tied lower down. fed through first and foremost. And actually, now that I think about it, yeah, the screen does need to be in here while I do this. Because I've got to get this installed. Pretty much like normal. And then I have to come back and solder the top. <laughs> All right. Try and get this plugged in. This is the hard part because for some reason this ribbon is a little bit shorter than OEM, but also I have these wires in my way now. I'm going to slide the bale open, try and hold it in place, and then drop the SP down on the ribbon, and then try and close the bale. And there we go. I'll have to get the buttons installed, but thankfully nothing is in a bad spot. That's, oh, but the bale's not closed. Shoot. Okay, well, it's partially closed. There we go. And it's not like we didn't have to open it back up in here. So just one screw here again, because we're going to have to pull it apart to reinstall the hinge cover, but I got to do the wiring first. Just don't want things to go everywhere. And yeah, thankfully everything's still pretty reasonably routed. I think this is turning out so far quite a bit better than the first time I did some uh, shenanigans like this. Oh, that's unfortunate. Ah, there we go. We need to route this through the hing. Hopefully these wires are long enough. I did not think to check that. I just kind of assumed they would be. 
And you know what they say about making assumptions. Because, yeah, that's not long enough. That's terribly unfortunate. Of course, one of them is. All right, which one was that? That was R. do this every single time. And I have to solder a small wire just to solder up these wires. Oh, that's frustrating. That's okay. That is L, which I've already forgotten which is which. Oh shoot, there's more slack on these. Okay, so L is the one that's closer. And actually, I can make that work. I should have realized. I didn't think to pull on the wires. They're a little toit. Okay, maybe I just barely don't have enough slack. That's frustrating as all heck. Yeah, okay, I better fix it. Better fix it before I rip something, you know? Oh, 
That's so frustrating. That's on me, but still. Like you can see, just barely, I don't have enough slack there. Uh, give me a few minutes, let me, well I'm saying a few minutes, but it's gonna be a jump cut for you guys. Let me get that fixed. All right, new wires soldered up. Got quite a bit more slack. I'm happier with this. So let's get these routed a little bit more cleanly and then let's get that hinge cover back on and I think we should be good to go. Uh, instead of using those uh, nice pre-cut wires from Funny Playing, uh, these little white ones, they sell them, at, sell them by the pack in like 25 or something. They're actually shockingly useful. They're just a little bit short for this specific application. Let's get that hinge cover in. Get that screw on. Alright, come in here, get that seated. I think that should be fine even with that wire running under there, but I'm going to fix it because if I don't fix it now, I never will. Yeah, that's a lot better. Okay. I think my wiring could be a little bit cleaner. Um, I think it would actually be pretty neat if I went and wrapped these around uh, each other so that they're not just kind of loosely dangling, but I don't think it really matters that much. That's really just an aesthetic thing. That plugged in. I should tape this down just for, um, just so I can keep it going straight for like aesthetic purposes, but I don't think it's going to matter that much. Just will clean this out. See what I was saying about the scuffs, it's already showing some damage just from me handling the thing. Ugh. Easy. And then I'll leave that touch sensor there because I guess it's designed to have one. Let's see what happens. Alright, so that feels fine. Let's see if it works. I mean, I know it already works. I've already tested this. Um, just not with this specific SP. Okay. I am going to use this on the bottom. For reasons that will make a little bit more s oh, I didn't anticipate that. It does seem to work though. 
I'm surprised that the slots that Funny Plane cut for that uh, also happen to exist on OEM. But I want to assemble this this way to prove two points. First is that we can mix and match the bottom if you want. But the second, I want to see how it fits on a slate. But we'll get to that in a minute. already in there. Duh. I was looking for the screw. And we already know that the bottom housing fits on the console, so not that big of a deal to not reinstall it just yet. Plus, now I've got a matching battery cover. I really am tempting fate by getting this far in the install without turning it on, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, I am. Because the whole reason I used this screen was because it was, it was broken and I had to rig it together. Uh, and unfortunately, the issue is rearing its ugly head again. Um, the backlight ribbon connector on this LCD was damaged. I can see that it is on, and it should work, but... Ah, <sighs> bear with me while I get that fixed now. Alright. Ta-da! Now it's working. It's really low brightness. You can't really tell, but there's a touch sensor. Ta-da! Alright, let me get this reassembled. And we'll keep going. The problem is that uh, there was a defective bail on the ribbon cable itself, uh, or it was damaged by a customer trying to install it and uh, returned as DOA. I'm not sure which, but either way, it ended up in my pile of parts because, I mean, it was it's basically useless. They can't sell it as a new working kit because it's not new or working. Um, and even if I fix it, it's still not new. Uh, but I could still use it for shenanigans like this. Um, I was able to fix the bail, and I was able to fix the ribbon itself. All I did was just snip off the damaged part, scrape off a little bit more, and then just shove the ribbon even deeper in the bail. Uh, but how... I think if we hold L and R and... Yeah, there we go. Now we can adjust the alignment. Yeah, buddy. Oh, wait. That's not perfect, but it's good enough. <laughs> I don't know why I closed it. You don't need to close it to put a game in. So first, let's get that. We can see that, well, I don't know how well it's coming out on camera, but 
when we pull up this specific test ROM image and there is flicker on screen, it means that the console itself needs the potentiometer tweaked. Um, thankfully, that is quite easy to do on an SP because we just plug it into charge uh, and then we can just pop the battery out. You have to plug it in before removing the battery, otherwise this doesn't work, but um, that is to say you can't just boot it off the uh, plug alone. You have to boot it off the battery power and then you can swap it. But all we do is we just tweak that potentiometer, that screw right there, until we get something we're happy with. Reinstall the battery. And that's it. Ta-da! Now we can go through the tests. I don't have all of them available because I hit the wrong option, but that's fine. 240p alignment is better than the aging alignment, so let's try that. Oop, that's not it. Which one is it? Grid? Yeah, that's it. So you can see I have the full image available to me. Uh, because this is an ITA kit, which uh, does not have the larger viewing area, and then just a standard lens works with it. That's fine. Uh, it would be better if it was fully laminated, but this is certainly good enough. There is enough of an air gap in there that I'm not getting um, any Newtonian rings, uh, but it is also close enough to the lens that it looks laminated. Yeah. Almost there. Uh, we have brightness controls by holding the brightness button and then using L and R to go up and down. And then as you saw, I had the adjustment ROM avail or the adjustment functionality available. Let me actually kill these lights so you can see it a little bit better. All of them. Anyway, uh, if we hold brightness L and R, we can pull up a mode that allows us to adjust the alignment of the LCD. Uh, And we can go both left and right, but as far as right goes, I'm all the way against this wall here. I can't go over any more, but it's good enough. Boom. And otherwise, it's going to perform pretty much like any other ITA screen, because that is literally what it is, an ITA screen. Um, we can do the flicker test, see that it's not showing any weird artifacts. Uh, there's nothing getting like stuck on the screen. Oh, I didn't actually see how bad that is uh, oversaturated on the camera. I'm sorry. Uh, bring the brightness down a little bit more. Okay. You can see it looks pretty good uh, as far as the flicker goes. There is very minimal flickering uh, that is due to the somewhat shitty pixel response of these particular LCDs but in this particular case it is actually an ideal use because a lot of games uh, any that use transparency as a matter of fact are designed specifically with this kind of flickering in mind um, we could do lag testing. Unfortunately, I don't really have the setup for that. Uh, I have already done um, like the scrolling tests. I haven't seen any weird drop frames or screen tearing. And same as evident here, we can look at the scaling. You can see every other line is indeed showing. Every other line is indeed showing as we expect. And then the grid pattern looks perfectly good unlike some of the newer APUS kits. Um, we can take a look at the backlight. We see that there's no weird pressure zones. I'm pleased with that. Um, otherwise, you know what? This is very satisfactory. Power cycle that. And now once again, I have yet another Game Boy with a uh, 
or I have yet another SP with a Game Boy Advance kit in it. Uh, this one has the original Funny Playing 9380 V1 kit with that horrifying screen tearing um, and quite a few other mods. And I've never updated it because it's my only console with the V1 Funny Playing kit and I kind of want to keep it for um, like testing reasons and so on. But you know what? This is cool. I'm, I'm digging it. I think I'm going to I'm gonna keep it like this. Eventually I'm going to put the bottom back on. But first... I suppose let's move on to the very last thing that I'm sure you guys care about. And for what it's worth, because I used a standard lens and not the smaller square funny playing IPS style lenses, uh, it is actually like located within the housing pretty solidly and it's not, it's not like collapsing back in. So I don't have to have any foam or anything back here. Uh, but I think it looks pretty darn good. Uh, anyway, moving on. Put some of this stuff away. And let's try out the back on a slate. So, of course that has a battery in it, because why wouldn't it have a battery in it? Oh. Yeah. Well, it is what it is. <laughs> I probably shouldn't be using this particular slate because I'm actually really happy with the uh, color arrangement, as it were. But, yeah, we'll try it out. What did I miss? I missed that one. my bottom. It's not every day that you lose your bottom. There it is. I have a whole bunch of stuff stacked on top of it because of who I am as a person. Uh, we need a power switch. Wow, that fits a lot better than the last one I tried it on. But of course, the last one I tried it on was not a retail model. It was um, one of my old prototypes like this bad boy. But if it fits on the retail model, I suppose that's all that matters. That's a long boy. Ah, huh, that's fine. Oh, I should have checked this. This has the long holes in it. Hopefully I didn't just ruin my backlight kit. Right, let's pop that bad boy in there. It's probably fine. Yeah, we're good. Go into that. Option, key input, and you can see my shoulder buttons are still working perfectly fine. And then all the rest of the buttons are going to be totally fine. So, yeah, I'm pleased with that. And you can see that's approximately how this thing will look on a slate. And let's get the lighting back on so we can inspect the fitment. Um, 
on the side here it's perfect on this side here I'm pleased with that it's pretty much perfect on this side here it's pretty darn good and on the back uh could be better but you know what it's good enough uh the only single problem and this was not this is not a problem with the funny playing shell partic in particular this is more a problem hmm, I don't want to say a problem. It's more a intentional design, design decision on my part. Uh, so these plastic injection molded shells have a little bit of a draft angle, which means if I hold my screw, nah, let's grab something that's actually straight. If I hold my spudger at the angle matching the plastic, you can see it's not quite 90 degrees. It's going to be closer to like 87 degrees, give or take with a one to three degree draft angle and what that means is the walls on the plastic are not perfectly straight so you can see as i slide my spudger up and down there's just a hair gap between the back of the spudger and the shell uh, as the shell curves out like this of course i'm exaggerating but curves out like that I didn't match that draft angle with my shells, I matched the top of the shell. Uh, which means that the shell is going to curve out above the slate just a little bit. That was an intentional design decision on my part uh, because the draft angle for these shells is different for every single make. So it was either going to match one of them and then none of the rest or none of them and I decided let's just match none of them because that way everybody's equally unhappy uh, and yeah it still doesn't match the funny playing so that's kind of what I expected and realistically if you look at this with any other shell of course I literally just took apart the only slates I had at my desk the retail versions at least um, they're all going to be the same. Every single shell for, for Slate SP, it's that's just how it is. I'm sorry for pointing that out if you never noticed it, but it is what it is. Otherwise, I think this is actually one of the best matches yet, um, but also they look sick as hell. I am very eager for Funny Playing to drop more of these so that I can uh, upgrade some of my Slates. Uh, even the accessory notches line up. I put the accessory notches in the slate just so that it matches up with the back shell. You can't actually use them because the uh, screen portion gets in the way, but I think it's pretty darn sick. And uh, I did not install it in the slate, but the USB-C mod that comes with these shells, or is intended for use with these shells, I have no idea if it actually comes with them or not, uh, it does it does fit, like physically fit within the slate, and it should work. Um, I, of course, like I said, I didn't test it because it's already installed in here, and that's kind of going to be a pain in the butt. We'll have to, I'll have to install this other one at some point into a slate, and we'll we'll show that off. But I don't have any uh, like bezels for that, so it's just going to be just going to be a hole in the back housing. But I think it'll be good. Otherwise, I think that covers everything. Uh, two hours later, uh, this video itself is an hour and 20 minutes, basically, and then the other video is another hour, but, you know, there's lots to cover with this sort of stuff, and I hope I have covered it with... I hope I have covered it sufficiently. Oh, man, that looks so good. I... I really hope Funny Playing sticks with this uh, this clear, this glossy clear. I think it looks so freaking good. I am absolutely stoked for it. Let's install a sticker. I want my spudger. There it is. So I guess. I can talk while I'm doing this. I'll wrap this up here. Um, big shout out to Funny Playing for sending this to me to check out. Um, 
they've been super super helpful um, with some stuff that I can't really talk about not yet anyway um, but they've also been making a lot of really cool stuff uh, they've got a lot of stuff in the pipeline um, plenty of stuff that I can't talk about yet but trust me it's coming soon and it's gonna be good um, one thing I can talk about is they've got like this this Android emulator console thing that they're working on um, that I was under the impression was done and then it's just been radio silence about that um, but it's like designed aesthetically like a Game Boy Pocket and it's using those Q5 screens but it's running Android I believe um, it's this whole standalone thing uh, but it looks really cool and I'm really stoked for those things to come out that is not the best choice of sticker for this shell but I think <laughs> I think I think it looks pretty cool nonetheless. Um, as far as legibility goes, it's not. But whatever. I'm happy with it. It fits. It's nice. It's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, they've got a lot of cool stuff coming out. This shell being one of them. And uh, the backlight kit that is intended to go with this shell and not the one that I shoehorned in. Which fits shockingly well but I guess that's what you get when you put a um, when you put the backlight kit that is effectively designed for this thing just with the wrong ribbon on it you know is what it is uh, but yeah I'm, I'm super stoked for these things to come out I have no idea if this texture is final I kind of hope it is but I have no idea if it is I have no idea what colors they're coming in uh, I know there was talk about getting some painted um, probably to have similar finishes like this, uh, just so they could have OEM-like shells uh, available, but I, I don't know the details on that. Um, we'll just have to wait and, and find out, uh, but otherwise, I am extremely hopeful for this, for this shell. Like, everything I'm seeing so far looks really promising, um... I, in, in the first, the other video, I did have some complaint. How did that pop out? All right. Well, I already found one weird thing. But it's back now. My left hinge was, like, partially popped out. Well, it's in now. Maybe I just never fully inserted it. If so, that's my bad. But... Yeah, man, these things look super cool. Um, I will throw some relevant links in the description, uh, like for the first half of this video where I just did the basic install. Um, if you're interested in these clear stickers, I got these from Retro Game Repair Shop. Um, I'll throw a link to those. Uh, hopefully they come with battery cover screws going forward so I don't have to try and rip one out of a shell because there's no way I do that without, without scratching this thing. Um, but whatever we'll see otherwise that's all i've got i think i've got to cut it off here otherwise i'll keep rambling all night and it's already almost 1 a.m so uh thanks for watching guys um again big shout out to funny playing for sending this my way to check out and i've got some more stuff trust me and um by the time this video goes up this stuff probably won't be out so there won't be too many links to it in the video description uh but if you're watching this not when it comes out, but sometime later. Um, I will go back and edit the description and add some links. So if it's out, check the description. Um, if not, check the description anyway. Um, I'll put the relevant information as I get it in there, or at least I'll try to. Uh, otherwise, that's all I've got. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a fantastic night.